I want to I want to talk about coaches leaving and all this stuff, right? Okay, yeah, let's let's do it. So, like, there's a ton of stuff now. Now, I'm a little bit. You can say that I'm biased or I'm sensitive because he left for my school, okay? But but I liked Brian Kelly, and I probably would defend Brian Kelly leaving no matter where he left, as long as he didn't go to someplace shitty like Alabama. <laughs> I I don't understand. Like all these people are super critical of how he. I want to ask all of those people. How do you think these guys should leave? What do you think they should do? Like, there's no good way to leave a program or to leave a school or leave a place you've been at for 12 years and you've done really, really well. Not just really well, better than anyone else in the history of that school if we're looking at it honestly. Because some of those national championships they have was back in the day when they were the only team on TV. This is true. I, so, I will tell you this: the the only way to fix it. But, but hang on, but hang on. But but if you leave a small school, if you leave a little school to go to a big school, then then we praise that coach, and we don't say anything. So it's okay to shit on the little kids, but it's not okay to shit on Notre Dame kids. And, I mean, from the media backlash, that's what it would seem, right? But I don't I don't understand the consistency of that. Mike Norvell leads Memphis for Florida State, and he's. And he's praised and he's heralded. Yeah. Brian Kelly leaves from Notre Dame. Everybody who covers college football that's not a Notre Dame fan or grad universally agrees the LSU job is a better job. Yes. But all of them seem to think it was a huge mistake to leave. You can't. I can't believe you left your school. can't believe you quit on these players. That's the word we're using. Quit on these players. What are we talking about? Well, I think the, so. Quit on his guys? So, so hold on, hold on. I think the issue here is that Notre Dame at least has a, a, a slim sliver of a chance of getting into the college football playoff, right? And that's what you do this for is to win national titles. I think the the quitting on his players thing for Brian Kelly is basically him admitting, even if we get in this thing, the the roster that I got can't compete with these other two rosters or these other four or five, whatever it is. I. I, no, I, I I don't see. I disagree with that. I kind of disagree it's too. But other, yeah, it's the other one roster. The other one roster. Everybody else, he knows they can compete with. He knows they can compete with Cincinnati. I, there's no question in my eyes, in my mind, that he knows he can compete with Michigan and whoever the hell else gets in at third. He also knows, without a shadow of a doubt, with this roster, with this team, if he coaches the most perfect game, they have no shot against Georgia. Yeah, that yeah. he's leaving to go try to compete against Georgia. Yes, a hundred percent. That's that's the only thing. And I'll tell you how we fix it is we move the early signing day to August. Like that's that's the way that you fix this, right? Why because, do we need an early signing day? Why do we need two? Uh, I don't have. I will tell because you why. People who actually make a living doing this stuff run the sport, and they need like more content. That's why. Well, I will tell you this. By the way, we had talked about it's. It's more for the kids. The kids are the ones that really wanted it, right? They're they're the ones that pushed for it in the compliance offices and all that kind of mess to go on and get them to sign so that they don't have like the extra time of having to fend off people that are that are caught. We've talked about this before, but if you do it in August, I think think that's a. We talked about that, and I'm going to say the same thing. That's a bullshit argument. That's a that's a complete nutter horseshit argument, Gary. I I don't think that we need a second one, honestly. Like, just let this thing be done in February. That way everybody can get through bowl games or whatever else they need to. You can make to, uh, coaching hires, you know, afterwards. You don't have to get them on the recruiting trail right now. Brian Kelly could have stayed with his team until they get left out of the playoff on Sunday, whenever that is. You know, there's a lot of stuff. That, he he could have coached in the playoffs. He could have like, coached, he yeah. Like try, he could have tried to, 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 to win a title and see what he can do there. And the national championship game is on January 10th, and national signing day would have been on February 1st, 2nd, or 3rd, whatever it is every year. Like, it, you'd still have a month. Like, <laughs> what are we talking I, I about? I just don't, I don't understand the, the, I hate the lack of consistency in people, right? Like, that's yeah. what I really hate. Like, if one guy does something, we, we you know, we get all up in arms, we call him a quitter, or we call him a cheater. We call him a you know a piece of this or a piece of that. But but if another guy does it, 
we're like a man, look at him, like making his way in this world and rising up through the ranks and, you know, trying to go win a national championship or do something special or whatever. Like, wait a minute. Don't act like you think you feel bad for the Notre Dame kids, but you don't feel bad for the uh, for the Louisiana kids. Well, no, this right? this all has to do with whether or not they like the guy that they're talking about. Well, that, but that's bullshit. You, you agreed. Can't change the way you you cover something. You can't change the way you feel about something based on if you like someone or not. That's the whole problem we have in the country right now. Yes. Like if you if you are, are right wing, then you cover the world in a certain way. And if you're left wing, you cover the world in a certain way. No, just cover it and be consistent. And if something is wrong, it doesn't matter who did it. It's always wrong. And if something is right, it doesn't matter who did it. It's always right. Bad people can be right sometimes. And assholes can do good sometimes. Like, just be straight across the board and be honest about what you're doing. I hate this shit. I hate it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, but you know it was coming, right? Just but just because of the timing. I don't know. It just it's it's very irritating and I understand where you're coming from on it. At the end of the day, like all the stuff that's coming out, all that it, it this is a fast moving news cycle. <laughs> this will all be old news by next week and we won't have to even worry about it. Uh but it is frustrating in the moment, for sure. But I, I would like for them to be consistent. Most certainly. I, these are people that I respect. These are people that I follow and I read and I respect them. And 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 it just it makes me realize, man, maybe you're not as smart as you come across. Maybe you're not as, you know, deserving of, of my respect as, as I originally thought. Like, you know, I just yeah. think it's a really shitty thing to be inconsistent. The only thing I want in this world is consistency from people. Uh, we, we don't have a whole lot of it right now. I will tell you that people let their biases show frequently, and and that's the way it goes. That is the way I'm it goes. I'm okay with you having a bias, but you got to be honest about it. Yeah, I don't know that a lot of uh, a lot of these media uh, members that cover this sport nationally will <laughs> will openly admit their biases, right? So I think that's the difference between like what they do and what you and I do here. Like we just put it all out on the table. Like if we've got a bias, we will let people know. And we'll try and be unbiased for the most part. Like, at least I do. But I, you know, I, I, nothing about this surprises me because I don't think there's a lot of people that really like Brian Kelly. Like, I no, think he's a great but, football coach. It, but All right, hang on, hang on. Go, let's get to that part. He, all, all I've seen is, is old coordinators come out talking about how big of an asshole he is and how he's not a player's coach. And he's a, he's a tough, he's straight business. And he's not personable at all. And nobody likes him. And nobody, whatever. How is that any different than Nick Saban? Uh, you went off, you know, four or five national titles, and it's okay that you're a prick? It's okay that nobody wants to work for you? But, uh, yeah. but this guy makes it to a couple of national championship plays, rounds, but, but doesn't win any. And so he he's wrong for being a prick? He's wrong for being business only? Like, I mean, don't this forget. Is the inconsistency. They, they didn't like him when he was at Alabama. Uh, when, he, when he first went to Alabama. I mean, it became a huge, huge thing, and there's still a ton of people that don't like him. But it, it'll be the same thing. Brian Kelly gets him a ring at LSU, and all of a sudden he'll be the talk of the town, and, and everything will be forgiven, and he'll be smiling on all these different ads and all that kind of stuff. Like it's that's the I, way that the game is played, and it's wrong. I just, I just, but, I just don't. I yeah, that it's just something that I I can't abide by. It's not. It, it bothers me. It, it bothers me badly, and it has nothing to do with it being my guy. It's it's, it's okay to leave this job for that job, but it's not okay to leave this job for a different job. And, and you know, one guy is, is, is a hero, but the other guy is a, is a villain. You know, whatever. I just think all this is stupid. I just think it's all stupid. And it's, you're talking about 40, 50, 60-year-old men that write about this sport, and women that write about this sport. These are not children. These are not young guys saying crazy off-the-wall shit because they're emotional. These are these are people that have been doing it for decades. Yes, like yes. they should know. I have this expectation that you should know better. You should be better than that, the, but uh, you're not because nobody is telling you to be. The nobody. standards in journalism have dropped uh, precipitously over the years, uh, and it's it's a shame to see it. But uh, you know, I mean, <laughs> I don't know how to change it at this point. It's sad. But it's the way that it will continue to be for quite some time. 
that's the only thing I want to say on. Like, I like that it. pissed me off. Like you know, just reading all this stuff and listening to all these guys, you know, what you know, talking about the coaching moves and some are great and this that, and another and other guys are assholes and quitters on the team and, and I'm just like, hang on, how did how did they both do the exact same thing? But but one is a quitter. And the other guy is a hero. Like, that didn't make any damn sense. No, it didn't make any sense. No, no, I'm with you. I totally understand where you're coming from. It's uh, it's strange that there has been more vitriol towards Brian Kelly than uh, Lincoln Riley leaving Oklahoma, you know, the day after Bedlam. Uh, it's it's a little weird. It's certainly weird. But I don't see it changing anytime soon, brother. <laughs> I mean, it's well, going to be this way every year. Every I don't year. care that nobody likes my coach. I like my coach. They can all kiss my ass. <laughs> I think that's a good spot for us to wrap this thing up. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter, at GaryWCE, at ChrisBGiannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com, or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.